The last three videos I did were on a Tektronix 191 RF signal generator. That was a very high-end instrument introduced by Tektronix in 1966. This represents the upper end of the signal generator spectrum. In 1966, this cost $65, $45 in kit form. At the same time, the 191 cost $700. This is an RCA WR-50B RF signal generator. There was a WR-50A. They seem pretty rare. They look just like this, but they are apparently wired for 220 volt line voltage. And there's a WR-50C. Now this signal generator contains two vacuum tubes. The C model is just this thing on its side, knob, big knob, big knob, knob, <laughs> and it's all solid state. So tube type, transistor type, B, C. Electrically, the specifications externally are the same except for the fact that they've now turned it on its side. This was taken from an instruction manual printed in 76. I know that this existed in 66, maybe a year or two earlier. Neglecting these sweep positions this is a six position range switch A through F A represents 85 kilocycles through 200 kilocycles F represents 12 megahertz through 40 megahertz. So this frequency generator spans from 85 kilohertz to 40 megahertz. This particular one has a BNC connector output. I'm not sure that's standard. I've seen it before, but usually these things had a permanently attached uh, coaxial cable coming out of them. In addition to a range switch and a frequency selection switch, we have an RF output high-low switch and a potentiometer for fine RF attenuation. There's no, no volts, no dB, just an RF output. There is provision on the front here to plug in a crystal, quartz crystal. Uh, the crystal will oscillate its, its fundamental frequency, and the output will appear here. And we can, again, turn the output of the crystal oscillator high or low, and then attenuate the crystal oscillator output. If we don't want both the VFO and the crystal to be here, we can turn the VFO off. Either this adjustable oscillator or a signal generated by the crystal. Either one of them, crystal or variable,
can be modulated. The modulation can be external, in which case it goes in here. Internal, in which case AM modulation is applied to both the variable RF signal and or, depending on the VFO, if it's enabled or not, the signal from the crystal oscillator is amplitude modulated by an internal oscillator. I think it's 400 hertz. And the percentage of modulation can be varied here. This is also the on-off switch. These two positions in red and are marked sweep are selected here or here and they replace these frequencies. The oscillator here has a nominal output center frequency of 10.7 megacycles megahertz today and here the output is 455 kilocycles or kilohertz and this frequency can be swept by putting it in this position so we can cause this frequency, center frequency nominal, to be swept or this center frequency to be swept. These were popular and still are popular intermediate frequencies for AM and FM radios. The sweep allows us to look at the bandwidth of the intermediate frequency amplifier stages. This particular one has a three wire line cord, which I believe to be original, but according to the schematic, a lot of them had just two wire line cords. I'll take it out of the case, there's these four screws and there's one or two screws back here. This one only has one. A lot of these had two screws. These are sheet metal screws, they're not machine screws. This is built more like a consumer item than an industrial or laboratory item. The reason for this big hole will become apparent with the permanently connected line cord. I actually need this hole to remove the line cord from the enclosure. I hope. There we go. Without the case, it will not stand up and when it falls down, you run the risk of damaging these coils. These coils are tunable, and there are capacitors here that are tunable to adjust the frequency. So when you set the dial, it's more or less accurate. This calibration can be performed with the case on. That's why we have this big plate that we can remove here. At the back, that will give us access.
to these coils and these capacitors. These are various coils. That's probably the lowest frequency and that's maybe the highest. I don't know yet. And these are trimmer capacitors for fine adjustment. The actual tuning is done by a capacitor here. When it's set fully this way, this little line in between these stops. This cursor should line up with this little dash. Whenever the capacitor is fully meshed. There are uh, two transformers, an electrolytic capacitor. We have two vacuum tubes here, uh, each a 12 AT7. Take one of these out. So they are RCA electron tubes. And we should have a date code. Of 6730. So the 30th week of 1967. Probably the original tubes. Take this one out. And it is the same. Uh, 6730 RCA. Underneath we have a real dog's breakfast. This I don't believe was factory wired. I believe this to have been a kit. This certainly doesn't look like good factory wiring. Not at all. So this is actually a kit. These are, there's two of these little metal cans here and here. They're diodes. There's nothing else really that stands out other than some pretty ugly wiring. 